Okay, two more problems to go, 52 and 60, 62. Uh, 52, we need to find the altitude of geosynchronous orbit around Earth. So this is going to be using centripetal force as the net force, where the net force, the forces that make up the net force, there's actually only one force, and that is the force of gravi gravity. So. First off, what's a geosynchronous orbit? That is an orbit oops, where um, where a satellite is always above the same position on the Earth. If you, sometimes if you look up in the sky, for example, um, if you look at the space station, the space station would be zooming by. Looks like a shooting, well, a, a slow shooting star, maybe, or uh, just a dot that's kind of traveling like, like that across the sky, maybe about that fast. Geosynchronous orbit. That is, uh, you look up at a satellite. It would look like a star, essentially. It's uh, the same, the same spot. And so, it's it, the same spot in the sky. So what that means is it. it takes 24 hours for it to orbit around, whereas like, the space station takes, what was it? Yeah, the space station orbits the Earth about every 90 minutes, so it's zipping around pretty quickly. So geosynchronous, it would orbit the Earth once every 24 hours. It's because the Earth is spinning around once every 24 hours, so this would have to spin around at the same rate. Um, oh, actually, I just thought something. So, a good little review from uh, Angular, the Angular unit, right? Remember, V equals omega r. So, the omega would be the same, the angular speed, as the Earth, but in order for that to happen at a farther radius from the center, it would have to be traveling much faster than someone standing on the surface. Anyway, that's just review. All right, so let's uh, let's convert time, 24 hours, into seconds. Just Google that real quick, and you get or multiply by 60, uh, 3600, and you get 86400 seconds, and um, so the speed that actually what I was just talking about here the speed that this satellite this geosynchronous satellite is zipping around the earth at is d over t constant speed we will we'll assume and how far is it traveling around in its orbit it's a circular path it's a circumference and so that's 2 pi r, where r is the radius of the Earth plus the altitude. And we're looking for a. And the time is 88,400 seconds. Now we know that in order to orbit you have to have a force pulling you in keeping you moving in a circle so first off F net equals centripetal force which is mv squared over r and this v is going to be that v but now we only have one force that is contributing to the, this net centripetal force and that is the force of gravity which is G times M, mass of the Earth, over R, the Earth, squared. All right. Um, actually, no, this is the force of gravity out here, not on the surface. So we're just going to leave this as R. Let me actually erase that. This is just 
R. So first thing to notice is these masses cancel. This R cancels with one of these R's. And we can plug in V squared here, so we'll square this. This goes in here. So we get, uh, well, I'm just going to square everything. So 2 squared is 4. And we get pi squared. I'm not going to foil this. I'm just going to leave it as radius of the Earth plus the altitude, all squared. And then over, and then I'm just going to go 8, 8, 4, 8, 6. Jeez. Doing videos this early in the morning might not be the smartest idea. A little groggy, but that's okay. They need to be done. <laughs> and then we have to square that. All right. Woo. Okay, so this equals g mass of the Earth over. Now this distance r at the, where the satellite is is again radius of the Earth plus the altitude, so I'm going to just label it like that. And so what's cool about this is that we can combine these, basically get R E plus A cubed, because we've got two of them here and a third one we're going to bring up, equals G mass of the Earth times 86,400 squared over 4 pi squared, All right? And then we'll cube root both sides. Another way of doing that, if your calculator can't, doesn't have like a cube root feature, is to just raise it to the one third power. And we know everything in here. So that becomes R E plus A equals this number, like all of this. So A equals all of this minus R E, and that equals 3.59 e to the 7 meters. All right, so that was a good use of centripetal force being the net force, and also speed being distance over time. Um, basically, sort of, uh, well, sort of none of this. <laughs> Which section is this from? 52. That's uh. Planets and satellites, Kepler's laws. Yeah, I didn't really. There was nothing really new. Um, didn't really discuss Kepler's laws in particular because they can be derived with all of this, all uh, all of this stuff. And so, um, yeah, this is more just review from past stuff. So that's why I didn't stick it. Well. What I do is I just put new stuff, new concepts in these main concepts. But as you know in physics, we are always revisiting the good old days All right so uh, what else was there? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. oh, and the geosynchronous orbit that's you know did they they didn't even even really oh yeah, they, it stays over a certain spot on the equator. so anyway. So some good stuff in here, and so we got one more problem, number 62, so that's coming up next.